Remember that there's a balance between the energy sent from the sun to earth, and that balance has been established over the evolution of the universe and earth and all living things on earth. That balance starts with the sun sending energy, radiating energy as UV visible and infrared, which is heat, IR. You could draw rays coming from the sun. So earth then receives that energy and either radiates, reflects, or absorbs the energy from the sun. So earth also can be drawn as rays radiating out, but they're not visible light rays. They are only just heat. The infrared is radiated back out. And some of that radiated heat is lost to space, but some of it is trapped in Earth's atmosphere. And that's a natural necessary process called the greenhouse effect. Atmospheric gases are like a blanket that keep Earth warm and at habitable temperatures. Gases that are called greenhouse gases have the ability to trap heat in the shapes and the bonds of the molecules. It's mostly carbon dioxide that does the job of trapping heat in Earth's atmosphere. And we will also look at other gases like water vapor and methane, CH4, that also trap heat uh, through the bonds and the shapes of those molecules. But any greenhouse gas has the ability to trap heat and keep heat in Earth's atmosphere and be part of the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas because it's the gas that has been increasing in concentrations since the beginning of the industrial era and burning of fossil fuels. A lot of the other greenhouse gases that are in much smaller amounts, including methane, also can trap heat and they also have risen since the beginning of the industrial era. We know that from Venus's atmosphere, greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide lead to increased temperatures. What we're experiencing on Earth is an enhanced greenhouse effect. This is basically the same thing as the greenhouse effect. There are gases in the atmosphere that trap heat. Higher amounts of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, more heat is trapped and that would return more than the 80% of heat to Earth. So that enhanced greenhouse effect has led to warmer temperatures and not just warmer temperatures, but climate change. We're a long way off from the example of Venus, but we do face some difficult challenges with climate change and all of the associated events of climate change, like hurricanes and sea level rise. But we will also be talking about how each one of us can do our part in fixing the problem that humans have started. Let's focus on the chemistry of those greenhouse gases. We can't see those gases, they are invisible, but how do they trap heat? So we also can't see exactly how because they're molecules. Um, we can't see these molecules, but they're shapes we can model. So molecule shapes start with what's called a Lewis structure. So we'll first look at drawing Lewis structures, which are atoms and how they're bonded and showing it in a two-dimensional format on a piece of paper. So get your paper ready. Get a periodic table ready. You will be using all of that to actively draw Lewis structures. You're going to start with a chemical formula. Here's an example of a chemical name, methane, and you want to convert any chemical names to a chemical formula. So this chemical formula, CH4, indicates one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. Using a periodic table, look at the family number for each element. For carbon, You'll find this carbon symbol in family number four, which means that this carbon atom contributes four electrons. You'll find hydrogen, the hydrogen symbol in family one, which means that each hydrogen atom contributes one electron. From the chemical formula, CH4 has four hydrogens. So you want to multiply those four hydrogens times the one electron each hydrogen brings. So that's four electrons coming from those four hydrogens. Adding up all the valence electrons contributed from all of the atoms in CH4, that's going to give you 4 plus 4, or 8 valence electrons total to work with. You start with the total amount of valence electrons contributed from all the individual atoms in the molecule, and you redistribute those electrons equally amongst all the atoms in the molecule 
in drawing the structure. So it doesn't matter where the electrons originally came from. Did they come from hydrogen or carbon? It doesn't matter because this becomes a shared pool of valence electrons when you total it in this step. And they're going to get redistributed when you build the model in the following step. Now that you have the total valence electrons, next step is connecting these atoms, starting with a central atom. Choose one atom to be in the middle. If you have only two atoms, you connect them with a single line. But if you have more than two atoms, like this example of methane, there's five atoms. Then connect all the outer atoms with single bonds. And one bond is one line, which is two electrons. So for this carbon, you're going to draw the carbon with four lines and four hydrogens. Now each one of those bonds to the hydrogen is representing two electrons. And each hydrogen atom is stable, becomes stable in the formation of that covalent bond, which is two electrons. That allows hydrogen to obey what's called the duet rule. The reason why hydrogen bonds with carbon in the first place is because it only has one electron and it wants two to become stable. Forming the covalent bond, sharing electrons with carbon, allows that stability and drives the bond formation. Hydrogen obeys the duet rule, and all the other atoms obey the octet rule. Both are the same idea, which is having a filled valence shell. That's the outermost energy level to have eight electrons, which is the octet rule, for all the atoms in the periodic table. They have the family number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but not eight. So to have a filled valence shell, atoms will share or give up, lose electrons, or gain electrons in order to obey the octet rule or the duet rule for hydrogen. And the carbon starts off with just four. Well, when it shares electrons with each hydrogen atom, when there's a total then of eight shared electrons or four shared pairs around that carbon. For a correct Lewis structure, every atom has to have the octet or duet rule fulfilled, and you have to use that correct number of valence electrons that you calculated from the periodic table. In these examples of Lewis structures, you can see that there's hydrogen has two electrons in this bond, and then this fluorine has a total of eight electrons. There are six that are non-bonding. Those are lone pair electrons that are not in bonds. And then there are two electrons that are in a bond, and those are called bonding electrons. This is chlorine gas, Cl2. Chlorine gas has two chlorines bonded, and each chlorine has eight electrons. Drawing a circle around the eight electrons here for this chlorine, you have six electrons that are not in bonds, so these three pairs are called lone pairs. They're non-bonding electrons. These electrons, there are two electrons in this bond that is shared with the other chlorine. This bond is representing a shared pair of electrons. That's a covalent bond. And then this is H2O or water. This has each hydrogen having a bond, which is two electrons. That hydrogen has two electrons. This hydrogen also has two electrons in the formation of those covalent bonds when the electrons are shared with oxygen. The oxygen has two lone pairs and two shared pairs. So the lone pairs are non-bonding electrons, and these shared pairs are covalent bonds. Those are single bonds with those hydrogens. In this example, you've got O3. That's ozone. Ozone has three oxygens, and there's a central oxygen. One oxygen is bonded with a single bond, and on the other side of this one, on the left side, you can see a double bond. What's shown here are what are called resonance structures. That's when you can swap the position of a double bond with a single bond and have an equivalent Lewis structure. Equivalent Lewis structure means that the same rules apply. Every atom has the octet rule fulfilled, and the correct number of valence electrons. This basically occurs when the position of a double bond is switched with a single bond. The only difference is the position of the double bond. There's a double bond on the left, and there's a single bond on the right. This compares to the equivalent Lewis structure, which has a double bond on the right and a single bond on the left. So the only difference between these two structures, these two resonance structures, 
is the position of the double bond is swapped with a single bond.